Hello, so I'm going to show you how to run cluster fuzz actually from the perspective of a developer in the cloud and let's get started. I will start with a stopwatch actually. I'm going to use it to show you uh, how much time each step takes which is illustrative because many times um, some things I will cut them on the video but they take quite a bit of time. So first of all, I will sign in my Amazon console and then I will click a launch instance. So from here, I will put just a common Ubuntu and then, you know, something reasonable. I will take a two, uh, T2 large. Actually, I will not do anything in the next screen and I'm going to launch instance. And now we wait for this to initialize. We'll grab the IP and we'll open a few terminals and connect to it. Okay, so here we are in two and a half minutes and um, we have three consoles connected to this uh, virtual machine. It is green, so it's running. So first of all, let's go and configure a few more ports. So edit inbound rules and then add a new rule and let's add 9000 here from actually everywhere and then now 1008 and again from everywhere okay good so now we'll be able to connect uh, to this instance in those ports we are see that we're already in four minutes so the process will follow is actually described here on the readme and um you can go look forward, get started cluster pass local in AWS and find the instructions. Uh, I'm not sure I will keep them up to date, but they should be better na than nothing. And uh, we're now 4.22 and the first step is also is as usually the sudo apt get update. Okay, and then we'll go install Python 3.7, zip, Python 3, Python 3.7 dev and clang tools. Uh, note that Clang Tools is not really necessary, but it's necessary for fuzzers, uh, for developing fuzzers. We'll see this now. Okay, as this step finishes, let's go install uh, PPN as well. Okay, let's see where we are now. So, if I check Python, it's 2.7. If I check Python 3, I will see 3.6.9. Python 3.7 minus V it's here as well so everything looks good uh, one problem is that if I try to say clang uh, or clang plus plus actually uh, this doesn't map to something so let's let's use this one okay so now clang plus plus will point to clang plus plus nine and this works nice so I will skip those steps for now and um, here we have already verified that this works as expected. Actually I follow the instructions here in the prerequisite of the cluster fuzz mostly up to now. Especially here installing Python 3.7 and install Go programming language. So this is what I have done up to now. Uh, it says here the next step is install Debs, but I haven't installed Go. So let's go install Go. Uh, push the temp and then this installs go so it's the instructions in cluster fast here okay this was fast okay and uh, let's put those also in our profile so we can find go I press the enter I copy paste those and then uh, control D and now source profile and we can see here go okay so this works as well perfect so right now we're exactly at this point and uh, can go and check out the software uh, git clone i have it a little bit later in the flow but it's equally good so here we are right so let's see where we are right now we are in our home directory and cluster fuzz and we are ready to install dependencies. So now note we are in the ninth minute and we start installing dependencies and this will take a while. Okay, so we can see here the apt-get part is 
uh, getting to the end and we will start the pipen quite soon. Here we are. So now the Python dependencies start. Okay, uh, we can see in this case there was a failure installing TensorFlow, which ha hasn't happened to be in before, but in general when this fails or something fails in that process, sometimes just restarting the process helps. Okay, so the problem was that I was running out of disk space, so I had to resize the disk, which took a few minutes. So I guess the idea there is just try a little bit larger instance or set the disk to 16 gigabytes at least. Okay, so pip completed and now not, no dependencies and we are done. So we can see 25 minutes later and the installation is complete. So one problem you will see that is, is that in some places there is the assumption of uh, connecting to localhost and uh, this doesn't allow us to connect uh, here uh, because actually for example here uh, this is it says localhost here but we would like to connect on a remote IP which means that uh, in this case this is GCS uh, emulator would like it to bind on every interface and not just localhost so one small modification on this one and one small modification here and here we have to set actually our IP and now we are ready to uh, listen to to this IP instead of the localhost which is great so our cluster fast server will be on this IP 9000 of course we haven't started yet let's check our free space here so we have available 8.2 gigabytes so this is not necessary in this time but if you feel that less than 5 gigabytes are okay to run your your bot you might need also to change this um, in build manager so this is in order to get rid of an error uh, so pip and shell and we can start to try to run uh, the server before we do that, um, although it's not strictly required, at this point uh, ClusterFuzz needs uh, this uh, for us to authenticate and uh, just to create a JSON file locally. So we use the URL it gave us here and we put the verification code, it stored the JSON in this place and now ClusterFuzz is ready to start. So let's start bootstrap, which is again a lengthy process. Um, we start this on 27th minute past. So at this point it gets all the dependencies and tries to create a kind of isolated environment. Um, so that when you deploy this on Google App Engine, you have something similar. It helps for debug, but it's a very time consuming process to be honest. It also builds templates and this takes a couple of minutes. Okay, and actually on about half an hour we see here booting worker PID and if I go and refresh this page I will see cluster fast. And note that you don't have to do all this process again so I just terminated that and um, you see now it's down so you can use keep installed depths and when you start the server and you can see in just a few seconds you can have the instance started here we are so this is the first way when you develop just to use this flag which is kind of undocumented and you can go way faster so another thing we want to do is to run a bot so we'll do this here see the cluster fuzz okay and now we start the bot okay so the bot started and let's also see the logs fail to get any fuzzing tasks uh, so this is fine because actually we haven't given any fuzzing tasks but uh, we are okay for now uh, we have a bot running we'll see how this will uh, turn out in a few seconds 
So now let's create a fuzzing target. Now we we have gone through prerequisite and run a local instance. Um, and here is the bot actually in the logs we are viewing. Now we will roughly follow the libfuzzer example from here. And uh, let's see what happens. So cut fuzzer cpp. So let's create a file. Okay. Now let's compile that. So now we have a fuzzer actually with the libfuzzer. And we can see that it instantly finds uh, the bug. The bug is kind of obvious. You see here, I, I access data that might not be available and that crashes it. So then we create a zip with this one. And then we download it. Okay, so we downloaded the zip on our local computer and now the fun part starts. So we have cluster fuzz here in 39 minutes and we go to uh, jobs and let's create a new job. Uh, it's here at the end. The, the job name should be very specific, so it should have both libfuzzer and address sanitizer ASIN as uh, the name, platform Linux. Here in terms of templates, both libfuzzer again and address sanitizer. Okay, and now we have to choose the zip file. So we choose it from a local directory and we click add. So at this point, if you get a failure, it means you haven't opened the port or you didn't do these changes I said before uh, about um, not using localhost but using this IP here for, um, for uploading the file. But if it all succeeded, you should see here existing jobs and here actually you can download the zip. So 41 minutes passed and we go to the fuzzers tab here. And we want to activate actually map this job to this fuzzer. So we select the lib fuzzer and here we do this checkbox and now we're ready to go. Nice. So right now, if we had more many uh, bots running, we would see somebody would pick that up. But right now, it hasn't, and this is actually in a sleep loop and waiting for something interesting to happen. So we don't have time to wait for that. So let's kill that. Control C, and now let's run again the bot. So now instantly it will come up and. It will find the job to do and we see now in 42 minutes it starts trying to download the binary it has already up to up updated the log here it shows that um, the job it is going to run right now is this the one that we just created so now you should see this uh, custom binary build take some time although it doesn't compile something Actually, I don't know what it's doing there, but it takes um, some time. Let's make this a little bit larger. So now a little bit later, starts running the fast job and it found the crash. That's great. So if we check the logs, we will see that it's a reproducible crash. If we go to the test cases, we will not see it yet, which is interesting. So this is because it will perform this multiple times um, before actually it adds it to the list here. So it will try to minimize it, it will try uh, to see if it's reproducible, and then we'll see it appearing in the test cases. If we also note at the logs here, we will see here that it's able to identify crashes reproducible and also here security flag equals true. So it's a security bug indeed. It's a memory access invalid. So we break the heap. Again, so like we're 44 minutes and we cannot see it in test cases yet. Okay, and now it's 45 minutes and we can see the bug actually here. We can see that it says platform Linux, obviously, reliable reproduce and it's a security bug. Okay, and if we click here, 
So you can see all the properties here, plus relevant information from uh, the crash and also the history. So that's it, 45 minutes and we have Clusterfuzz working on an Amazon server. Of course, uh, this uh, takes quite a bit of rehearsal and it's stable right now, but uh, it might change in the future. Hopefully it will become easier so you won't have to perform all those little hacks here and there that I showed you. And um, yeah, so maybe you're able to do it in 30 minutes or less. In any case, I used Amazon just to show how to do this with zero really dependencies, no pre-installed software. So I hope you find this useful. Thank you very much.